So, as you probably know by now, because I haven't shut up about it, Cultaholic were lucky enough to be invited to Orlando, Florida by 2K, where we got to play WWE 2K19 and interview some of the WWE and NXT superstars. However, the thing I was most excited about was seeing the Performance Center in person. We've all seen the WWE released footage and slick website advertising the Performance Center, but the facility itself is still a pretty difficult place to visit if you're not employed by WWE, so this was pretty much like Disney World for a wrestling fan like myself. So we arrived at the Performance Center at around 9.30am and were immediately greeted by head coach Matt Bloom, you know, Albert, and assistant head coach Sarah Amato. Matt told us what we were and weren't allowed to film. Just for clarity, the only things we weren't allowed to film were a couple of rings at the back of the main hall where wrestlers were training for upcoming matches, and as such, by filming them we could give away future storylines, and also the medical room where wrestlers would be being seen to by medical personnel, and this was for obvious privacy reasons. We started in the lobby, where we were introduced to the security and front desk staff, joined onto the lobby are offices for meetings as well as language classes for international NXT talent. There are also a few display cases containing former NXT superstars ring gear. After this we walked through the boardroom where upcoming NXT shows are planned, not much to say about this bit, it's just a room with a massive table in it, moving on. Next, we head to the green screen studio. I apologize for the quality of the footage here, there were about 20 of us trying to catch a video in a pretty tight space. This area allows talent to cut promos, review those promos immediately, as well as get feedback from Performance Center staff. This means talent are able to experiment with character work, improve their delivery, and watch each other perform in a controlled environment. One of the really touching things about this area is the Dusty Rhodes puppet, which sits over the monitors as if he's still watching over the promos and new recruits. I will say that it's clear that Dusty's presence is still very much a part of the Performance Center. The Dusty Rhodes Tag Classic trophy is still proudly displayed, which is surrounded by plaques engraved with some of Dusty's more memorable quotes. In fact, when I was watching the NXT talent play WWE 2K19, I'd say almost all of them at some point played as the Dream. After the green screen studio comes the medical room where both NXT and main roster talent receive treatment. As I say, we weren't allowed to film here, but it was very impressive indeed. Next is the gym. I'm not going to pretend to know anything about gyms, but even with my incredibly limited knowledge, this is clearly a world-class fitness facility. It's a 5,500 square foot strength and conditioning room with daily training sessions. Most of the talent will train once a day here, then do further training in the ring. Strength and conditioning coach Sean Hayes talked us through some of the equipment. Here we saw both NXT and main roster talent train. A bit later in the day, Mojo Rawley and Finn Balor swung by to do cardio, and there's not that much else to say. Put simply, this is the only place to come to train if you work for the WWE and you're in Orlando. The final room we saw is perhaps the most impressive, a 12,000 foot training room containing seven rings and one show ring, complete with theatrical lighting, a proper entrance way and ramp, and broadcast capability. The training rings are split into different levels, men's beginners, women's beginners, men's intermediate, and so on, and there are a few rings at the back of the room where wrestlers are able to work on upcoming matches. Some of the trainers on hand while we were there included Johnny Moss, Norman Smiley, Serena Deeb, and Scott Garland, by which I obviously mean Scotty to Hottie, do the worm. So here the talent learn everything from general ring skills, to chain wrestling, to how to work for TV, to moves themselves, and so on. After this, we then got to see a few matches, with the main event, as it were, being won by Heavy Machinery. This is a regular thing, with matches being held most days, and honestly, the coolest thing about this was all of the talent and coaches cheering on and giving support for whoever was in the ring. The sense of camaraderie was genuinely quite special. It's clear that the talent are just so behind each other, like everyone wants everyone else to succeed. Following this, some of the main roster talent had a chance to see their characters' entrances in WWE 2K19, then the NXT talent had a chance to play the game like the big kids that they are. And that's pretty much it. I'm sorry if this video comes across like I'm being over complimentary, I'm really not. I just thought that it would be a cool thing to shoot while in Orlando, and I'm not sure if you learn anything that you wouldn't have learned from visiting the Performance Center website, to be honest, but hopefully this video serves to provide an outsider's perspective of a place which has always looked like the best place in the world to train, and, well, as it turns out, is very clearly the best place in the world to train. Thanks for watching, I've been Adam Pacitti from Cultaholic.com and you can follow me on Twitter here. If you enjoy what we do here at Cultaholic, you can pledge to our Patreon, that's patreon.com forward slash cultaholic. And most importantly, don't forget to hit subscribe and join us.